Welcome to episode two of Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast brought to you by HBO Max and DC. We got butterflies, we've got vigilante, and we've also got white dragon. I don't know, but we have an amazing interview with Chikuri Uji who plays Mern, so stick around and let's get into this. Why is there a bald eagle in your car? It's Eagly. Eagly is your pet eagle. Yeah. Is your dog named Doggy? <laughs> All right. Do you have a daughter named Daughtery? <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Ify Wadiwe. And I'm Fiona Nova. And welcome to Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast from HBO Max and DC. And we got a dope show for you. But as a reminder, since this is, you know, episode two and you might not get it yet, this is the companion podcast. Each episode is going to talk about everything that happened in the episode that is referenced and before that. So if you haven't watched episode two yet, hit the pause, go back, watch it and come meet us after. It's not a pre-show. This is a post show. So we'll see you after the show. Look, we got a dope episode ahead of us. So let's just jump right into it. This was a super fun episode, right? Yeah, this was maybe... Uh, well, I was very excited to see it because episode one kind of set it, set it all up oh, for yeah. us. So now we're kind of... We're trying to get some answers. So what what are we what are we dealing with? Okay, we, yeah. first of all, what the fuck are the butterflies? We don't know. Yeah, and so we just know they're a code name. There's, we just, it's a code it, It's name. a code name. We don't know what's going on with them. We don't know if these are... These are robots. If they won't, they, or they've they, been, or if they were manufactured. Yeah, manufactured. We don't know what's going on. I just love that it was Project Butterflies. I think it's a good tie-in with Suicide Squad because it was Project Starfish. Yeah, yeah. I and really was, did like that. Yeah, and they, now we're on to Project Butterfly. Yeah. So now you're like, okay, what is this going to be? What's this next thing going to be? Yeah. Peacemaker pulled out this like rune covered yeah, no, Wi-Fi yeah. router. Yeah, and it's just just, sorts. and we don't know what it is. But then he has to get out. He was outside. He could have ran away, but he had to go inside because he had to get to his clothes stuff, yeah. yeah he couldn't find his socks yeah yeah which yeah. is devastating to hear well, also that's what was fun is like hearing like john cena curse because yeah. like <laughs> someone who's like been following john cena since he was the rap yeah. and wrestler uh he's always had this like squeaky clean goody goody persona like yeah. he's what you know in in wrestling you call a baby face mm -hmm. you're uh, a, a a good guy that you sell to the kids yes. so he's never done anything raunchy for most of his mm -hmm. career and now we see this new side we of him. saw the new side yeah. of him, which is he does really well oh it's he's so like, great he kind he's of nailing nails, yeah he's, he nails his that. comedic timing is off the yeah, charts yeah, yeah. it's so fun <laughs> uh but yeah now we're seeing these like two cops yeah, yeah. they're like detectives um yeah. they're coming after him mm -hmm. we're introduced to them really because yeah. they're gonna yeah they're gonna be i feel like they're gonna be important he's escaping he's trying to figure out and then he enters into this random apartment and essentially holds hostage these two just random people and yeah. the, the woman starts to fall in love with him you, you know, the, he's just, that whole interaction was just so what is happening look, you know when you just have you know uh, a partner who's not assertive and it's you got so someone who comes in and they're wrapping you up with rope but they're still checking in on right. you because that's an important part you know <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can use the ropes but make sure you're checking you're in you're checking in on making the people sure you're, are you you're, good yeah are you good mm -hmm. you still good you let good? me know you mm -hmm. know exactly so that was that was interesting that yeah. was an interesting thing uh, to add but I think that also just adds to Peacemaker's charm and yeah, yeah. you kind of understand where he's coming from well but it was um, very interesting too because you know, I was, you're wondering, like, how the heck is he going to get out of this? They're, right. they're kind of go. And then next thing you know, everything leads back to Peacemaker's dad. Uh, looks like yeah. Economos uh, did what was good. Um, did, Economos I, is the hero we needed. Yeah, yeah. I know everyone was upset. Yeah. In, the, in this show, everyone was just upset like why'd me? you do his dad I'm yeah like, no. i'm like me i i was yeah. okay with how that transpired that's exactly who, who i <laughs> would have nothing, set up yeah there was nothing in my heart that said that was a wrong thing that happened yeah. and no, even it if it was thing. being framed yeah you know mm. he must have done something else yeah <laughs> it was just about time yeah, yeah yeah so i think yeah we get the dad now is going to jail and we finally meet the character, the one and only, yeah. Vigilante. So how did you get out anyway? I thought you were in prison for life. It's a secret. Dude, I'm your best friend. I know it. Well, who's your best friend then? 
Someone you met in prison. I knew it. Dude, it's Eagly, obviously. Another show would have them just be heroes because, you know, most heroes are saving the day and it doesn't matter the collateral or what yeah. the what the battle the effects of who they're mm -hmm. getting or how small the crime is super villains superheroes they are all not one dimensional beings yeah. they all have goods they all have bads yeah. but i think vigilante i don't know that whole interaction about his dick yeah. where poor peacemaker crying in his bed and he just does he just was like please i know i know, I I know, know. your dick is out i know your dick is out like, just turn please, around and look just, and he's like it was no it. It was. i don't have it i promise yeah, yeah. what a great friend yeah he was like i promise you guys just gotta turn around and look i'm gonna force you to look yeah so that you know yeah but yeah so we see uh we see peacemaker and, and uh, uh and, yeah, vigilante and vigilante get together and they um they they had that appliance shootout they did they have like fun it looks very fun i also liked that you can kind of see their relationship because in the beginning it felt like at least to me it felt like vigilante was maybe like this fanboy yeah of some of oh yeah sort. no it definitely but it's like felt oh no way. they know each other and they've yeah. been friends for a while yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know he said his sidekick was eagly it seemed like his sidekick might his sidekick be vigilante but it also just seems like vigilante just follows him everywhere and and peacemaker's kind of just like okay yeah you can join me or just like it's not really like helping and, and yeah. it's just like yeah you can come come through yeah i know uh, so which no, is, i like that relationship I yeah it's, it, and you know at this point we've tapped in and we're really kind of seeing the cohesion of peacemaker's place yeah. in the dc universe and it's funny because you know you know the Arrowverse has a vigilante right. this one might be my favorite version this though. is your version this one, this this one, is, uh, i think it might be i yeah. think I, re I really do yeah. like i really yeah. do like how he was portrayed and yeah. just how it is i don't know i'm i'm i think he's gonna probably be one of my top favorite characters for mm. sure you um, know who's not gonna be my top favorite no, we know his dad because yeah, he was in jail uh he's in jail and then like all the white supremacists are kneeling to him and then i was I, it was so funny because i really resonate with that guy who was in that chair he's like, he's like uh, i ain't, I ain't I dying move. for this yeah, yeah i ain't, I ain't dying, dying for this I'm and good. also i like the it's real funny of like seeing the white supremacists uh get on their knees and call him the white dragon which I'm not I, I have thoughts, but I'm not I'm not okay, I'm just let it thoughts. come. I'ma just yeah. I'm gonna let it just come naturally okay, okay. Uh, as we watch. But uh yeah, they all kneel to him and all the black inmates are just like, oh no. Yeah, I uh, you see because oh, no. again, uh, again, coming coming from a just being like a newcomer to this peacemaker, this universe really, mm -hmm. I uh, and not reading like any of the comics, uh, I'm just like what i was like white supremacists in this show i guess it's not too far off you know you, yeah, you'd you, be surprised how many white supremacist super villains they were <laughs> which is funny because you know now we're in this like generation where all these like nerds are like can comics stop being so pc i'm like there are so they, many they, they've been so PC, many times yeah. superman has beat up so many racists yeah yeah, yeah. you know it's like they've what are you talking do, about be it's, they've been, they they've been, been be they, doing yeah. that They've been they've been been that they've been been that. No, I think this episode was great. It had a lot of things uh, to like, just a lot. Of, I guess we got some of the answers. Yeah, not really, but like we got some. You got some. I mean, we're slowly, it's episode two. Yeah, so it'd be a little two. too we're early slowly, to get all the answers. We're slowly getting into it. I'm I'm obsessed with Vigilante. He's my he's the best. Yeah, look, babe, car character. Look, it, look, at the it's. Moment. it's if if a friend's close enough to have a threesome with, you know, that's a good friend. That's great. That's a good yeah. friend. Yeah. But I um, I think you're talking about us getting some answers. Let's get some more answers. Oh uh, yeah, we've got a great in this, interview. Yeah. yeah, get this interview with Chuck Woody. Oh, absolutely. Hello, hello, everyone, and right now. I am so happy to say we're joined by the incredible Chikuri Iwuji, who plays Mern. How you doing? I'm doing well. And I'm always happy when people can pronounce my name quite well. The versions yeah. I've heard over the years. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, so well, thank, you know. thank you for nailing that. You're Nigerian. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I cheated because my name's Ife Chikude. So. We share half, half our names are the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but thank you so much for sitting in with us. We're excited to ch chat about the show. We're excited about your characters. So I'm going to just jump right into it and just start right. asking questions, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so Mern seems to have been tasked with saving the world with a band of misfits at his disposal. What is it like dealing with that burden of leadership amongst this dysfunctional team? <laughs> um, 
Oh, it's hilarious because I think that's a classic example of where life definitely meets art. Because as the actor, as Jakudi, the actor, working with John and Danielle and Stephen, you know, Jen, I mean, they're just and they're just hilarious. They're just hilarious people. And then you have James who encourages hilarity and madness, you know, from the God mics out there going, try doing this, keep doing this. So there was a side of me that was trying to just keep it together uh, with the actors. And then there's, of course, Mern, the character, trying to keep it together with a team he refers to as the Apple Dumpling Gang. You know, like that sort of mania you see sort of creeping up in Mern was actually a slight mania creeping up in Chikudi. <laughs> so it all works really, <laughs> really, really nicely. And also my background is just not about improv and all that, you know. When you come from theater, you don't improvise Shakespeare. You don't improvise Chekhov or you're running into a cul-de-sac. So these guys are great at improving and just going with it. So I'm there just like saying, please God, don't, let, don't, don't ask me to improvise. Don't ask me to improvise. So that sort of reads as keep your shit together. So actually life and art sort of came together nicely there, you know? I mean- I mean, just like you said, you have such a theater background, but in this show, there seems to be like a lot of vulnerable and emotional moments. How do you, do you ever prepare for a scene like that? I prepare for those scenes the same way as I prepare for every other scene. And it's really, honestly, it's, I I learn my lines. I drill my lines hundreds of times. Um, There is no, I always get weary about answering these sort of questions because there's, there's, there's nothing necessarily sexy about how I prepare I don't go look at salamanders in the Bronx Zoo you know or (laughs) try to imitate the the agility of a tiger or give up Mm -hmm. my apartment and live on the street to know what it's like to feel homeless I don't I use imagination and that's what my learning my lines is about so that when I turn up on set all that's important is that other person because all my imagination work and all prep work can never prepare you for the energy of the other actor in front of you mm. and your availability for them. And also this whole thing about getting yourself into an emotional state before the scene is a weird, it doesn't make sense to me because usually in the scene you enter it not emotional and then you get emotional. So the journey is what's interesting, watching you become that. If you've already come in with that, that's kind of a weird cheat that never reads true to me. And it just, I, it feels like I've come to play the end game instead of come to enjoy the journey. So I, I, I just believe in learning the lines, getting yourself relaxed, coming in there and whatever imagination you've had, those ideas you have, have them, but be ready for all that to change when there's this other X factor in front of you, which is the other performer and, 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 and chemistry. Ooh, okay. I like that. I, I do think, you know, I think you're right. And it really changes the way I think about, you know, approaching a scene. We're like getting some five star acting, acting <laughs> classes right now. Seriously. Oh, That's yeah. Really 100%. Right. So in this episode, we see Peacemaker trying to escape from the apartment complex, but his priorities get thrown off by some sweet vinyl. If you had to flee a crime scene and could only grab five records, what would they be? Oh, that's that's not right. <laughs> five. <laughs> yeah. Uh, score by the Fugees. Tom Waits, Mule Variations. I would need some kind of, that's like listening music. I would need sort of music for mood. So for me, my mood set setting is usually classical and opera. So I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to make a compilation that's both opera and classical. So it has to include as far as the classical music. I love piano concertos. So Chostakovich's concerto number no. two, Mozart concerto 20, 21, 23. And then as far as opera goes, as long as you give me lots of Verdi, La Traviata, you know, um, has to be in there. I need Marriage of Figaro from Mozart. I need uh, The Elixir of Love. Um, yeah, so as long as those are in there, and finally, Peter Gabriel's album, So, but I would need you to sneak in a version of him singing Biko from his Peter Gabriel Sings Live concert, then I'm good. Honorable mention for Barry White, who always makes me happy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, nice so one. yeah, you know, you have to have that. So that's my mm-hmm. collection. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a solid, that's a solid collection right there. So in a similar vein, that 
the scene where Peacemaker has to essentially hide from the cops and convince strangers to let them in, let him in his in their house. Uh-huh. If that were to happen to you, <laughs> let's say you're fleeing from the cops and you have to hide in a stranger's house, how would you <laughs> convince them to let you in? This is this is really bad. I'm sorry. This isn't me. I love animals and I especially love dogs. But knowing how much I love dogs, I would grab their dog, preferably a small, really <laughs> cute, cute dog, hold it in front of me and say, if you don't hide me, I'm going to shout. I'm coming out with a gun with your dog in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't hide me, I'm shouting that and I'm stepping into that hallway with your dog in front of me. And I think, I think, I think they would hide me. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Your You're right. Yeah. You're right. Your That's dog. exact. Oh, yeah. I feel so bad. I'm going to get so many complaints. Cool. <laughs> I'm not cool. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. That was, that was the only right answer, actually. It would let you into their house. You're right. <laughs> like appeal, appeal to their wants and needs. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's psychology 101. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's, you know, it seems like you know that's a stressful situation, and you know they we all like to relieve that stress. So much like you know, Peacemaker and Vigilante did uh, this episode. If you had the chance to take your stress out on some appliances, what weapon would you choose, and what appliance would be your first target? I hate technology, and at the risk of never becoming a spokesman for Mac Apple. <laughs> I would take a really good golf club and I don't even play golf and I would pretty much smash all my tech. They drive me nuts every day. At some point every day, even prepping for this today, my email for some reason wasn't arriving on my iPad. And I was like, I need that to get the Zoom link. I mean, everything was going wrong. So it would be that. I would take it out on all my technology and it'd feel really good. And again, an honorable mention, if I didn't do that, if it wasn't my technology, something that really bugs me when I go to people's homes are porcelain dolls. Mm. I have a problem with porcelain dolls. Mm. They're scary. Their eyes follow you around the place and there's always lots of them. So baseball bat to porcelain dolls. They're not appliances technically, but I would like yeah, to yeah. smash those up. That's my thing. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll allow it in this occasion. <laughs> The porcelain dolls count as appliances and oh, you can yeah. smash them in their creepy eyes up. <laughs> oh, yeah. They follow I'm you all everywhere. about it. Okay. Yeah, I'm all about it. So we love seeing you play Mern, but like, what was your favorite part of being Mern and just playing as him? Always cool to play someone with a dark past sort of mm. working on redemption. That's always such a great arc for an, an actor so it, because there's just so much you like to sort of live in the darkness, but redemption is something you look for. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I love that. I love the acting challenge of, of being British Nigerian. And I've, I've dipped my toe into playing Americans in parts, you know, like all the things on the ground railroad and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, which has been fun. But it was great to have this whole arc of this deeply American, even the name Clemson, which is a very yeah. Southern name. I mean, yeah. just yeah. having this deeply steeped American role over the course of a whole series mm-hmm. was such a joy for me working with my dialect coach, Koldi Kowloon, and just like saying, I've got to become someone else, you know, yeah. and coming up with, I've got to find his voice placement, everything energistically is so different that I, I enjoyed that sort of level of forensic detail in preparation for him, mm-hmm. whether it was working on, you know, vowel substitutions and dialect or um, sort of working on what his background is, because there's not much known about him. And James, you right. know, really, you know, created this character. He's not a character in the comic books, you know. So, like, I, I had him in my head. He came from West Point. He was the best of the best he goes into black ops what what triggered the slide to make him known as this dangerous character so i loved all that i loved immersing myself in that and i loved coming into work every day because it's 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 a real gift when the crew are interested you know the crew are the real litmus test oh, yeah. you know when the crew and the grip and all these guys that have seen it a hundred times they're going on to when they they're laughing and laughing hard and the camera is shaking because the camera operator is laughing really hard. You know you're doing something really fun. Um, so 
I really enjoyed playing, really having a go at this very American of, of um, American characters for me, you know, in that environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Mern is one of the, uh, one of my favorites. I think he's like a really awesome character and you really kind of see, you see that there's so many layers to him. Yeah. which I bet it was so much fun to play and to experiment it, with. It really was, especially with that apple dumpling gang of people where yeah. my instinct, you know, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit like when you, you see uh, Vince Vaughn play the straight man in a comedy. Yeah. I really wanted to get in on all the crazy fun with them, but I had to keep it together. And that oh, yeah. was a very fun challenge of being that guy that just keeps it together with this crew, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, okay. So much fun. Yeah. Well, listen, Iffy, guess what time it is? Yeah, yeah. Your favorite time. segment. Yeah, yeah. It's All time right. for the Eagly Mail. So, to wrap out the interview, we're going to take a question from the community. What unexpected challenges did you face on set or in your performance that you overcame? Well, there was one really funny one at the beginning, which is a bit of a segue, but my first day on set. I arrive and there's like a hundred people there. I'm already nervous, worrying if the cow will still be there to pick me up at the end of the day, thinking they've made a mistake. They actually thought I was Chiwetel a joke or not Chukudi Wuji. <laughs> they've hired the wrong actor. And I had to drill, I had to drill, use an electric drill and drill some screws into a tree in the scene. Now, the problem is I'm the sort of guy that when I change a light bulb, I feel like I've accomplished something major. I do not do <laughs> DIY. I mean, I, at one point I had the drills set to reverse instead of forward. The, the nail kept falling. I, it, was, it was a nightmare. I was sure I was going to get fired. So that was the first day challenge. But overall, the challenge for me was like, and every actor, I feel, at least for me, I still have to get over um, an imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. That, do they really want me? Am I really doing this? Am I really doing a James Gunn project? Is that really James Gunn directing me? Am I acting with these guys? Am I playing this? Clemson Mern, this ex I mean it's a dream to like be a cool guy that knows how to handle a gun and be like I mean it's all that stuff so for me the biggest challenge was dropping into that literally dropping in vocally physically an economy of movement the, the I mean those guys think in a different way you see them you you see guys like that they're very economical you know with how oh, they yeah. move and stuff and learning that and trusting that and then letting it all go so that like we said at the beginning of this segment so that the most important thing which is all great drama is is two people talking to each other being able to let that go trust it's there and know know that you're gonna do that so it was massive leaps of faith for me every day but it was such a worthy challenge because I, I really enjoyed the texture of this character because so much was going on with him that he never says as you know Fiona mentioned like there's so much underneath the surface with him that you've just got to trust that because you're living it, it's showing because you can't just show it. Does that make sense? So that was a Absolutely. that was a great learning curve, even at this stage of my career for me as an actor to play a role like that. You know, mm -hmm. it seemed like it just yeah. seemed like you had so much fun with the character and also just with all your other coworkers. They look it looked yeah. like such a fun oh, yeah. time shooting. So. We had it. We genuinely it. did have a great. We had such a magical time. It was so much fun. Oh, that's so, that's so <laughs> oh, great to hear. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's that's been great. really great. I know. Great. I'm so excited to see the journey of Mern this season and the rest of thank Peacemaker. You. But thank you so much for coming to chat with us. It was so fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was really easy. Thank God. Not like setting up was, but <laughs> the, the, interview, the interview part was very easy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you. Uh, and I guess we'll get back to the rest of the show, Fiona. Hmm. I just pretended to look at my fake watch on my wrist. So you know what time it is. What time is it? It's time for the Peace Prize. Ooh, Peace Prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the Peace Prize is a prize we give out every episode from a moment in the episode that really stuck with us in a good way. Yeah. Last last episode, we had the Eagly Hug, but we got something a little different this week. Yeah, what this week, listen, we got some vulnerability with Peacemaker, okay? Mm -hmm. He's sad. He's mm -hmm. deciding if violence truly is the answer, Ooh. which... It is, is yes, yes it which is, is a yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we also have the st his stalker friend, 
vigilante that comes yeah. up tries to console him in some way. Yeah. So I think the prize we're going to give is the death to peace prize, Ooh. which is when vigilante and peacemaker go out there and just shoot some appliances. <laughs> Look, cinema has taught us long, long ago that the best way to let out a little anger is to take it out on some old appliances. Yeah. So, you know, we got to we got to exactly. see that again yeah. and uh, using high powered weaponry, too. And I thought that was so cool. Just having high power weapons in like a forest, just like shooting like microwaves and stuff. It's great. I love that. Oh, yeah. I also think like. Again, like, I know we're joking about it, but it, you really do see that relationship that they have, which I'm all about mm -hmm. relationships that people have with others. And I really do feel like they, even though Vigilante is a kind of weird stalkerish fanboy yeah. kind of guy, I think Peacemaker really does care for him. And I think they're like a really good pair. So, I, and I, I think they also just jump, like, the riffing off of one another is just amazing. So, I. I don't know. I think this deserved the Peace Prize for this week. Um, I love them. I also really love Vigilante. Yeah. Number yeah. one fangirl here. I think uh, <laughs> I think we're we're all becoming fans of Vigilante at this point. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, uh, that's all we have for that's this episode. All that's all we have. So, mm -hmm. you know, thank you for watching and listening to Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast from HBO Max and DC. Now, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to tune in to the next episode where we break down episode number three. You know, you get it now, you know, after episode two comes three and then after three is going to come four. Yeah. 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 Counting yeah. numbers. <laughs> and also, if you want some amazing merch, just head on over to shop.dccomics.com and you can just get some sweet Peacemaker merchandise and show off your fan spirit for the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and let us know what were some of your favorite moments in the show and if you want to get tapped into the source material remember you can get that DC Universe Infinite membership and you'll have access to all the comics all the things this show touch into because look James Gunn is doing some deep cuts and yeah. with DC Universe Infinite you'll be able to find those cuts and um, I will be registering for a membership <laughs> that will be me Okay, and of course, make sure you stream Peacemaker and Podly on HBO Max so you can stay up to date with all this dopeness. Ooh, we love it. We love it. I yeah. can't wait for episode three, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Yeah, yeah. So see you around, and uh, keep the peace. Keep the peace. Yeah, yeah, I love it. We're doing it. We're keeping it. <laughs>